I think twice as long to work, you know, from home online. online. Yes. It's tiresome, everything but everything has yeah. to be written or spoken, and you can't just I, I, walk into someone's office and tap them on the back. Yeah. And the, good morning. Good morning, I everybody. Begin. Yeah. We we are live now, and uh, a warm welcome to all the distinguished speakers at the webinar on future of handloom and khadi. And the theme of our program today is revitalizing handloom and khadi for inclusive development. And uh, inclusive development is the key because most of our artisans are based in rural areas or from the tribal belts. And among them also majority of them are women. So we have a significance of sustainability and inclusivity in this program. We have an eminent panel of speakers from, uh, and we have Mr. Kishore Shah joining so early in the morning from London at seven o'clock there. So uh, with these words, uh, I would start the program and request Mr. Randhir Vikramthi, who is co-chairman of uh, Vicky Rastan State Council and uh, CMD of Mandawa Hotels. In fact, Randhir ji is the architect of heritage movement in Rajasthan and have built uh, heritage uh, tourism in the Shekhawati area and is also the general secretary of Indian Heritage Hotel Association. And uh, this theme of handloom and khadi gels with the tourism very well because uh, as we were there in the Future of Tourism webinar a couple of days back, it was the tangible and intangible heritage <laughs> Uh, that will help Rajasthan resurrect its tourism sector. So over to you, sir, for the welcome remarks. Thank you, Atul. Good morning to everybody. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all. Dr. Arun Mayaram, Economic Advisor to the Honorable Chief Minister of Rajasthan, Mr. Dheeraj Srivastav, Commissioner, Rajasthan Foundation, Mr. Dilip Chenoy, Secretary General, Fiki, Adun Shri, Ms. Leila Tayebji, Chairperson Prastha, Mr. Kishore Shah, Co-Founder and Director, Khadi London, Ms. Alka Madan, Campus Director, Pearl Academy, Jaipur, Dr. Tiloka Gupta, Director, Indian Institute of Craft and Design, Jaipur, Ms. Vandana Pradami, Chairperson, Fiki Ladies Organization, Jaipur Chapter, Art Spinning Delegates and viewers on the YouTube. I'm delighted to welcome you all at today's webinar on future of handloom and Abu on the eve of Gandhi Jayanti. The craftsmanship evolved over the years is reminiscent of the rich cultural tradition and heritage of our country. The handloom sector plays a crucial role in generating employment and revenue. It is one of the few sectors that preserves and promotes Indian culture promotion of traditional skills and capability by encouraging capacity and skill building coupled with design quality and marketing initiatives will not only ensure sustainability of the sector, but will also help revive the evading uh, uh, skills of the artisans and fostering exports. Rajasthan has a rich variety of handloom products in different regions like Kota Doria, tie and dye, block printing, zari, bandage, cotton razais and khesh, namda, sangani, bagru and barberi prints, etc. We have various success stories also wherein people have helped communities in getting access to skilling, finance and marketing. But this needs to scale up these initiatives. There's also a strong in, interlink between the tourism and local crafts, both tangible and intangible. Heritage will play a significant role in reviving and rec reclaiming the past glory of tourism in the post-COVID world. It is vital for all stakeholders to undertake measures that would influence the fresh energy influence the fresh energy into the sector. Else, these traditions will become extinct. We need to encourage members of the weaving community, both financially and technologically, to make this tradition sector to high level, take it to a high level and spread its charm around the world. I'm sure that the deliberations during the webinar would provide a meaningful insight and framework for the future deliverables. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, rightly said that uh, it's, it's closely interwoven with the tourism sector of Rajasthan. Now we have with us uh, the Secretary General of FIFI, uh, Mr. Dilip Chenoy, 
over to you sir uh, thank you uh, atul uh, very good morning uh, to everybody uh, dr arvin maira economic advisor to the honorable chief minister of rajasthan and the vice chairman of the rajasthan economic transformation advisory council mr dijit shrivastav commissioner rajasthan foundation mr randeer vikram singh co chairman fiki rajasthan state council and the cmd of mandawa hotels mr kishor shah co founder and director khadi london ms laila taib ji chairperson dastakar dr tulika gupta iicd jaipur ms alka madan from pearl ms vandana for mami who is the chairperson of the jaipur fiki so ladies organization uh, atul uh, sharma the head of the state uh, council in rajasthan uh, let me add my own welcome uh, to all of you uh, it's a delight to meet up with many uh, old friends and mentors and guides uh, in this uh, very important session on khadi and handloom um, you know i am actually uh, you know wearing a khadi handloom jacket and i got a handloom i'm sitting on a on a chair that has handloom jute uh, at the back uh, so you know handloom has a long tradition of excellent craftsmanship representing and preserving the vibrant indian culture uh, these are appreciated and acclaimed globally for the weaving uh, printing and uh, uh, elegance uh, each state in india has something to offer Uh, the uh, the, uh, the co chair actually talked about the great traditions in rajasthan but across india uh, there were uh, a huge uh, set of things that are available i would also like to say that earlier in august uh, from the 7th of august to this uh, for two weeks uh, there was a vocal for local initiative where uh, we tried to advocate all of us to actually try and buy one handloom or handicraft product uh, here so that we can support the tremendous uh, you know uh, talent that is available in different states by actually providing consumption for the products that they manufacture and that they sell um the sector i believe holds a lot of promise for the future uh, there is a heightened awareness about the use of this sector we can actually uh lead the world in these two uh, areas and uh, later on during the year uh, you know fiki is organizing a major uh, khadi and handloom event with the uh, small and medium industry and the, the kvic uh, later earlier uh, just uh, last week uh, we organized the 7th edition of vastra with rico on the virtual platform uh, we had over Uh, close to a thousand buyers who had actually come uh, uh, to buy uh, products uh, online, and um, this was exclusively uh, for uh, handloom uh, uh, products. And we will take this uh, further. I believe that with the presence and participation of such a wide uh, range of uh, people with immense knowledge about this sector, and many people who have devoted a lifetime. to the sector uh, the deliberations today will be extremely exciting and we will be able to actually come and say how we can promote uh, this khadi and handloom things in the future especially revitalize this sector and look at inclusive development going forward so thank you very much uh, and congratulations to the rajasthan state committee for organizing this thank you thank you sir in fact besides the jacket and the sofa cover we have seen the wide range of dresses that you have uh, wore during the handloom week and posted it on social media so it, uh, it 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 is yeah, of the personal passion also towards this thing yeah uh, i actually I, i actually pick up every visit that i go to jaipur and you guys should notice this i pick up something local every time Uh, wherever i travel i always go try and go to an artisan's place or some other place and actually buy something local and that's my small way of promoting it thank you thank you sir and now we have with us miss alka madan who is campus director of pearl academy jaipur uh, miss madan brings with her about 20 years plus of uh, career experience spanning top corporations and education institutions and she is passionate about women empowerment and building and works towards this in every sphere of life so over to you ms madan good 
you will have to unmute yourself alka ji you are on mute can you hear me now yeah yeah, yeah. we can hear you we can see you please go ahead i <laughs> just hold on uh let me yeah so uh good morning and thank you first of all for inviting me for such a brilliant uh, conference it comes at the right time also on the occasion of uh, uh the occasion of uh, mahatma gandhi jayanti now whenever we say this word khadi or handloom uh, there is a lot of emotion which is attached and uh, why it is so that because it is not just the hand spun fabric which we are talking about we are talking about a man behind it a man who revolutionized the entire movement called swadeshi and 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 let me tell you uh, you know when he started he must have started with a thought that what is it that i do which involves everybody which makes sense to everybody which is easy to process which is easy to expand and it is relevant for all the times and and that is a vision khadi handloom it's a vision and yes we got this khadi as a fabric of tomorrow which is relevant today also and when he started he made sure that every every uh, part of the supply chain is a part of that moment he reached out to the cloth merchant to the suppliers he very importantly reached out to schools charkha was taken to the schools during 1917 it started as a small thing imagine in our village of gujarat and it became a national movement and when charkha was taken to the school there was a uh, there was an effort that it should start producing finer yarn day by day why i am talking about this is got a context to it there are lessons in the history when we relook at khadi today we should look at it as an entire thing like billy brightly said there is so much to offer from every state and khadi is just not the uh, you know handloom is not just the word it is not just the hand spun woven it is it is a belief we need to believe ourselves and when we are talking about this uh, that it should reach out to every every part of the nation it to it should touch each one of us that is when the khadi the swaraj the 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 uh, swadeshi will become a reality i am very much in favor of taking khadi to schools taking khadi to colleges uh you know uh, we have got a a fabric which is like sustainable it is brilliant you can uh, make it modulate it into so many forms you just have to you know uh, do a little bit about with the waft with the web and and you see a lot of things coming out of it there are artisans which have this um, expertise with us we have to save this legacy when i talk about the school it should be a part of the curriculum students should actually work with the artisan to understand to appreciate to 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 preserve this legacy uh, i'm very happy to share with you that pearl academy the, st the students are encouraged they go to bagru they they go to sanganer they go to other places of the state to understand how these artisans weave how these artisans work and and i am not just talking about pearl it should be there in all the schools in all the it, it is high time we appreciate what has been given to us like the legacy but it's the fabric of tomorrow it's the fabric of the future look at look at the sustainability sustainability is no longer a corridor uh, conversation 
uh, sustainability is the mainstream conversation today and all across the world khadi has been accepted as a fabric with zero carbon print and looms which we do the, the other fabrics which may zero carbon prints look look at khadi uh, it just requires 3 liters of um, you know uh, water to to make to to uh, do one one meter of khadi against the mills which uses 55 liters we have the sustainable fabric with us now it's high time we take it to the next level we appreciate it and 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 uh, i am also here uh, this is my submission to everybody here we we have the best of the labs we have the best of the faculty we have the best of the students who are ready to cooperate let us sit down and work out on these ideas when we start from the childhood when we do how we can make certain programs so that khadi is propagated properly across the country how can we work along with the artisans this the, the entire movement was to keep the dignity of labor are we taking care of that are we taking care of the dignity are we taking care of their their uh, upskilling they have skills but are we are we investing in technologies to upskill them are we taking care of them make them contemporary these are some of the ways where we can talk about uh, you know artisans talk about the legacy talk about the fabric itself and it makes you know covid times corona uh, came all of a sudden but it made us sit back and relook at things Uh, we must have noticed this uh, that in every day life we are we looking hum do sochte hai ki hum ye cheez kahan pe galat kar rahe the time for reflection for all us and i believe when there is suddenly uh, we are talking about ye chinese app ko hum uh, uh, ban kare hum swadeshi kare we we look at it the manufacturing uh, of india is going down there's a lot of which msmes are doing there is lot which kic there are number of store which has gone up but we have to look at it into a complete picture as it that and 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 till khadi till handlooms become a part of every day's life each and every one's life it is not going to make any difference when we say swadeshi a uh, swadeshi does not mean made in india so deshi means that when we keep the nation's interest before our individual's interest by banning uh, foreign brands by banning foreign apps is not the solution do we have alternatives we we need to first work out on our alternatives see that we are all prepared to be on our feet and actually then we should look at it how we can propagate this and actually start living swadeshi start living swaraja in in actual sense so um, my submission is live consciously buy uh, every time anything which is local like dilip and you and uh, and i believe more than that um, on serious note we should look at certain uh, loopholes which are there in the system it's just not by you know doing uh, talks or something we should seriously uh, sit back look back and uh, work out on the solutions i am open to it my faculty is there my students are there moreover i offer my premises my labs which are world class labs to see that if i can be a part of this whole solution thank you so very much thank you thank you for that uh, speech and volunteering to partner in this initiative uh, we will also look at ke how we can uh, engage the local artisans and weavers and how they can take advantage of any Absolutely. design intervention from your side let's let, let's have a conversation sure that. sure uh, our next speaker is dr tulika gupta who is director of indian institute of crafts and design jaipur and uh, she is a researcher and educator in the field of clothing textile crafts and design phd in history of arts dress and textiles from university of glasgow uk msc in textiles and clothing from lady lady edwin college new delhi and has been a 
associated as a phd fellow with center of textile research for the netherlands denmark so with this experience we we'll look forward to your ideas over to dr tulika gupta a very good morning to you thank you mr atul sharma for for the introduction and i'm really grateful uh, to fiki for inviting me on this platform where we have such stalwarts uh, in the field of uh, in different fields i mean i must say tourism and uh, promotion of indian textiles i hold them in very high esteem um i have prepared a little presentation for today uh, being in academics i can't stop uh, myself from giving presentations so it's a it's a very short seven slide presentation and uh, all the photographs uh, i would like to uh, tell in advance all the photographs in the presentation are from our exhibition on khadi last year last year on the 2nd of october uh, we had iicd had done a presentation uh, on the philosophy of khadi in uh, uh, the jawahar kala kendra with the help of the government of rajasthan uh, uh, art and culture department and i'm really grateful because they trusted us and we could we, we really they made us really think about what is khadi and why do we need to take it forward so i've put some pictures from there and i'm just going to share my views i have 10 minutes i'll try to make the most of that so uh just just bear with me i'm just trying to share the screen and then i will um continue uh so yeah uh can you can you please see the screen yeah yeah it's visible yeah thank you so much so uh, once again i thank you for inviting me and so this was a webinar on the future of handloom and khadi uh and so i deemed fit that we put a picture of mahatma gandhi which was woven by one of our ex students uh and uh, i think he did a beautiful job of it so with um, due respect um i ask a question which we ask many times what is khadi khadi of course when we define it as a fabric it is a hand woven fabric made with hand spun yarns so we all know uh that it is different from the merely hand woven fabric because it is hand spun and hand woven and the word khadi itself comes from khaddi uh, which is the loom so it is a hand woven hand spun fabric yes it is these days most fabrics are made by mill spun yarns and uh, then they are either made on hand loom power loom or mills and most of the hand woven fabrics are made with mill made yarn so they are hand woven but not khadi so should we promote only khadi should we promote hand woven should we promote all kinds of fabric that is made in india what should we do and we discuss khadi year after year on gandhi jayanti why is it so why is it that we feel that we need to discuss khadi year after year on gandhi gandhi jayanti what is the significance what is actually the future of khadi does it have any future at all so the whole concept of khadi is it limited to a fabric or is it a philosophy and i strongly believe that it is a philosophy it is not only a fabric it is a philosophy it's a fabric yes it's a wonderful fabric breathable low carbon footprint as alka ji just said excellent fabric but most of us who wear khadi have other fabrics also in our wardrobe it's not that that we only wear khadi so what is khadi all about it is a philosophy and we strongly believe it is a philosophy of reliance and sustainability taught to us by mahatma gandhi who told us that don't be a consumer be a producer and i think as an academic as a uh, as a person who deals with youngsters every day i think this is also our motto our uh, prime ministers our uh, ministers uh, people who are interested in promoting the country they all say that we must make in india uh, well i say we must design in india we must make in india and that is the philosophy behind uh, behind khadi that gandhi ji wanted us to follow i have a little uh, a uh, fact i have a little page to show the facts and figures uh, because it is really worrisome that when did we start promoting khadi what was uh, you know khadi like or uh, what was the kind of fabric before the advent of the british and then uh, how do we take it forward so khadi was a symbol of self reliance a fight against british imports and this this figure uh, which comes to me from a book which i read called hand spinning and hand weaving which was a collection of essays uh, you know in 1926 it was printed by all india weavers association uh, sorry all india spinners uh, association in ahmedabad 1926 uh, 
Now in that book, it is so beautifully given. Uh, and I uh, reiterate, in the year 1813 to 1814, the cotton goods exported from India were, 50, uh, were of the cost of 52 lakhs, 91,458. And the cotton goods imported into India were merely 92,000 something. Obviously, we all know mills came across. There was Manchester, which was, you know, taking fabric from us, producing, uh, taking cotton from us, producing fabric and giving it back to the country cheap. And so from 1813, when we moved to 1832 and 33, we realized that our exports have dwindled to a, a mere 8 lakhs, 22,000, whereas our imports have highly increased to 42 lakhs, 64,000. What an amazing figure. And then Uske side may ek chota se likha hai, cotton twist imported. A twist meaning yarn. So the cotton yarn we used to never import. We, we had our own cotton, we created our own yarn. And now, uh, you know, after the 1820s, we started exporting, uh, we started importing yarn also. And eventually, by 1832 33, we were importing yarn to the tune of 42 lakhs of rupees. I mean, something that is indigenous to our country that we were making. And that is why all this uh, understanding comes of the way our weavers were suppressed actually at that point in time. And beautifully in the essay, it is summed up also that the British studied everything, what was wanted in India, what was to be copied, how precisely we need to make it, the precision, uh, how, how many dots should be there in a sari, what kind of a lungi should be there, what do Indians want? And all of that was being made across the oceans and being shipped to the country to be used. No wonder Gandhiji came up with the idea of create your own fabric. Why do you want to use all of this? Why do you want to drain your money across? And thus the idea of khadi, the idea of self-reliance produced for yourself. It was a thick fabric. How many times uh, do people really want to wear that fabric? But it was a fabric which talked about self-reliance. All the brides in the 1930s and 40s wore khadi. I've read letters of uh, some uh, important women writing, who does not want to wear a Banarsi sari? Now, Banarsi sari is also made in India. Who does not want to wear a Banarsi sari on her wedding, but she's wearing a khadi? Khadi was a symbol of self-reliance, that we need to be self-reliant. And I think that is the future we are looking for today. In this next slide, we have a picture of our students who were standing that day uh, and watching this lady weave, uh, sorry, not weave, uh, spin the yarn on a charkha. And uh, it was such a beautiful sight to see. And I took this picture and I thought uh, that I might as well use it today for this uh, presentation. Because we were all talking about the philo philosophy of khadi, philosophy of self-reliance and sustainability. Because sustainability definitely is the way forward. Surprisingly, when students asked me, log pehle sustainability ki baat nahi karte the. So then we have to tell them we were always sustainable. So kabhi wo baat hi nahi aati thi. Sustainability ko Hindi mein kya kehte hain, kisi ko nahi pata, koi achha shabd hi nahi hai. Kyunki wo tha hi nahi. Kyunki wo sustainability already inherent thi har cheez mein, alag se koi shabd hi nahi tha sustainability ke liye. So inculcating in youth the values of sustainability, meaning to learn to reduce, reuse and recycle and to generate meaningful employment. When, when we talk of sustainability, when we talk of khadi, it means that we are generating employment for everybody. Gandhiji in his essays, he writes, that spin kari sakte us time pe. So I think that, that whole self-reliance is the philosophy. Uh, uh, to be able to create products that we want to use, to be able to use indigenous skills and revive hand skills of craftsmen. So I think that is the future ahead. It has a bright future. It has really a bright future if we understand that khadi is the freedom to create our own, freedom to spin and weave our own fabric. It's the freedom of spirit and freedom from consumerism. Consume less, but consume with pride what you have created. I think that is what he meant. It shows respect for handcrafting and for humanity. And it also links various industries together because when we spin a yarn, we use a wooden charkha. So it gives employment to the person who's dealing with wood. It gives employment to uh, all other industries associated. It means to satisfy, it is a means to satisfy needs, probably not the greed of every human being, but to satisfy the need of every human being. 
And I think it's the epitome of simple living, high thinking. That is what he wanted to preach us. With that, and with, uh, with that, and with a little saying from one of the books that I read uh, by Gandhiji, which said, Khadi gaon ke saur mandal ke surya ke saman hai. Khadi is like the sun of the solar system, which is a village. Baki vibhin udyog un grahon ke saman hai, jo khadi se urja aur nirvah praapt karte hai. Jiske badle unhe khadi ka samarthan karna chahi. And I completely support this statement. With that, I just wanted to share my humble thoughts on this. Again, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you. You. Thank you, Tanika ji, uh, for that historical and philosophical perspective on Khadi. And uh, uh, our next speaker is Mr. Kishore Shah, co-founder and director of Khadi London. In fact, uh, he discovered Khadi 50 years ago when he went to India and volunteered for the Sarvodaya movement, a land reform movement which had evolved into a movement for village autonomy. Uh, Mr. Kishore Shah co-founded Khadi London about six years ago. The social enterprise has gained from his familiarity with the specific issues around the production of khadi and from his research which includes an extensive study of artisans in india he played an important role in finding a niche for khadi within the ethical and sustainable fashion movement of uk so i would now invite mr kishore shah for his presentation uh, good morning and thank you for inviting me to participate i missed a, another conference which i was involved in organizing in Jaipur in January, which is called the Globalization of Khadi. Uh, but this is, three of my colleagues were there, I couldn't make it, but uh, this is a good opportunity to, to uh, catch up on that. Uh, my presentation is going to look at how we can aim for transforming the whole textile industry using Khadi and Andrew. And I'll start with, uh, next slide please. Next slide. I'll start with the global context uh, which is what I'm more familiar with. I haven't been to India for a while. But then I'd look at how that global context can be used as an advantage for Khadi, not just globally, but also in India. I think India is more important than global if, it, if you're talking about Khadi. Then I'll talk about how we can support change that can make this transformation happen. And I think I'll end with, should we set up a goal for transformation? You know, instead of just talking, can we have real targets that we can aim towards at the national level and maybe in Rajasthan. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so I'll start with the, um, there's been a, a very transform, uh, you know, radical change in how people look at consumer, as consumers uh, generally. And it was more with food and housing. So uh, you can get an idea in 1999, there was about, in UK, ethical consumption was about 10 million, $10 billion and within 20 years, it has gone up to $40 billion, probably more now. Uh, that just gives an exa you know, it's an illustration of how strongly people are thinking here about sustainability in their daily lives, in the way they consume and in how they interact with the producers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what, was, what was happening while this change in consumer wasn't taking place. It's more around food, around finance, synthetical finance, around timber, but very little of it was around fashion. Fashion was going in a different direction. So you had, with globalization, you had very cheap clothes coming in from Bangladesh, from India, from China, and you know, a t-shirt would be similar to a cost of a cup of coffee here. So people just bought, they would buy clothes almost every week and most of it ending up in the landfill. <clears throat> that was going on, but suddenly, I think the change came in around five years ago with the, uh, what happened in Bangladesh. It's known as the Rana Plaza. Uh, the, the, the place called Rana Plaza in Dhaka, a building which housed uh, where garment workers were working, it collapsed and there were 1138 people deaths on that day as a result of that collapse. And this became a big moment for the fashion movement in the West. Uh, it's, and you know, they started looking at what are we really paying? Are we paying that five pounds for the t-shirts, five or three pounds for the t-shirt, 
or does it cost much more actually? Well, you know, and uh, there was a lot of introspection, people going forward, looking at uh, what, you know, how, whether they should change the uh, fashion patterns, about whether there should be a change in how they buy the clothes. And uh, next slide. <clears throat> so, so Rana Plaza was, you know, brought about consciousness about cost, about paying fairly to the, about working conditions in garment factories. But as the, as the uh, dialogue around fashion has developed, a lot of other factors are coming. Uh, climate change, Kadi, I mean, I'd, I'd say it isn't zero carbon, it's, I would say low carbon, because a lot of the processes involve a lot of uh, energy use, especially the process going up to slaver production. That's something I'll come back to later. There was there's concern about environmental biodiversity, uh, cotton and sheep, as you know, are, are becoming more and more, the biodiversity is being lost. The indigenous sheep of Rajasthan is giving way to Merino from uh, from Australia. You, you're losing the, 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 the diversity you had in sheep varieties in, in Rajasthan. I think hardly any cotton is gone in Rajasthan, maybe in a few pockets, but that probably wasn't the case in the, in the past. And as you, as you can see from an example in Kutch, it can be revived. There, are, there must be cotton seeds in different regions of Rajasthan, which you can start bringing back and reviving. Uh, there was this concern about waste, uh, you know, the, the, uh, with a lot of clothes, people buying a lot of clothes, it's called going to the landfill, is waste around productions. productions. And I think increasingly there's, there's a concern around water pollution. Uh, the three different sources of water pollution that fashion uh, contributes to us. One is pesticides, uh, and for cotton now, in India and I think internationally also, it's one of the biggest consumer of pesticides. It's more than food production, especially with uh, the genetically modified Bt cotton, which is now about 95% of cotton culture cultivation in India. Uh, it might have gone down in recent years because organic is coming up. There's a plastic uh, pollution. Increasingly, there's a shift from natural fibers to plastic fibers for textiles. And that, that uh, I mean, I think it's now almost half of the, or more, maybe even more than half of the clothes produced are, are plastic synthetics, either acrylic or uh, polyester or some other synthetic. And when, when, what happens when you use those clothes, when you wash them, there's the, the plastic microfibers going to the wash, into the water system. And there's there's a con concern that there is now one of the major contributors towards river and ocean pollution. Uh, another major factor, which I think Rajin, Rajasthan should be conscious of, is uh, pollution coming from printing and dyeing. Uh, it's a uh, lot of the chemicals which are now used being are highly, you know, that they're, they're very toxic, sometimes cancerous, and printing and dyeing is now leading to unusable water in places like Dhaka. And this, this photo here is from CNN from a recent report. It's from Pali. Uh, and uh, I think even in Bagru and Sanganer, the, there is concern about the chemicals being used and how they're going into the water system. Uh, if you look at overall, in terms of energy use, fashion industry is one of the major contributors towards cli uh, climate change. And within that, textile accounts for about 80% of the, of the energy use within the fashion industry. So production of textiles, Kadi and Henry, can help a lot in moving away from that. Uh, one fifth of the water pollution is caused by fashion, especially in the oceans. So I think that these are the factors which people are coming, becoming more conscious about in the West, I think increasingly also in India, and that, that brings us, next slide please. And so with this consciousness, I mean, you can see on the bottom right, there's an infographic, not very visible, but it shows how, how uh, it shows 
how that consciousness is converting into actual buying, consuming patterns. So in a survey, they found that almost 50% over all age groups, people were willing to pay more for eco-friendly products. And I mean, that's, that again is an advantage in terms of market. Uh, and I think Kadi, and I would include Handloom here, has, is, has the advantage because you know, it, 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 we're looking at natural fibers and I would say that, you know, if we can, let's move away from this thing called poly, polyvastra, which isn't Kadi, but which is certified by KVIC. I'm, I'm personally concerned about that. And I'm, I understand a lot of the large Kadi organizations that are dependent on polyvastra more than on cotton and wool and Kadi. There's now a demand for products which are handmade, which have low energy, which people can do themselves. We've been having uh, classes using a petty chaka in London. They've been very popular. Uh, so there's there's a there's a move towards craftsmanship. There's a move towards making your own thing. There's a move towards buying things which are handmade, which have a low energy consumption. People want fair remuneration. At least Kadi has since about 100 years since Gandhi started, this was a very important aspect of Kadi that people should be paid fair. Uh, I remember Vinoba carried out an experiment trying to make his own livelihood using a charka. And he found out that what the people were being paid, the spinners, was hardly, it's about one fifth of what they should be paid if they were to make a livelihood from that. And then he had a dialogue with the Sharka sang at that time, and they managed to raise it not to as much as we know what they liked it, but at least to a decent level. Uh, and since then, you know, payments and welfare uh, remuneration to spinners, to viewers within the Kadi sector has been important. And I think it has gained much more importance in the last three, four years. Uh, the payments have gone up substantially since about 2015, 16. So again, is something which we don't talk about, but which has a resonance in the West, that we know uh, that Kadi is a fair trade and in many and many instances, even handloom, but it's not always the case in London. Uh, there's an interest in finding out about what all the products we make, as where they are made, the story behind them. And I think again, Kadi has an advantage that especially, not always, but in, in many of the cases which are coming up, uh, the stories are very clear. People know where the cotton is made. They know where it's spun, they know where it's woven. And that's, that's the advantage that Kadi has in the global market now. Unfortunately, uh, there's been very little branding. Uh, there's been very little consciousness about Kadi in the West. When we started about five years ago, people would talk about uh, I mean, we talk to a fashion class, ask how many people knew about Kadi. Maybe zero, maybe one out of 20, 30. That is changing now. And we now have a Kadi project in one of the prestigious textile colleges. Of, it's a high ranking world textile college, uh, Chelsea College of Arts. So we're running a Kadi project with them. It started in February, it had to be put off because of pandemic. We're going to pick up again in October. Uh, so I think that kind of consciousness is coming up in the UK and increasingly and much more so in India. So you know, how people in India, when we started Kadi, there was very little interest, but the, young, the younger generation in India has really picked up on it. So how do we build up on that advantage? Uh, I think today, if you really want to build on that advantage, you look, need to look away from the conventional Kadi organizations and look at a larger picture which is emerging within the Kadi uh, sector in India and within the handloom sector. There are new players. Earlier farmers were not really involved in Kadi production. So there are a lot of organizations now. Uh, Gram Sava Mandal in Maharashtra is one. There's Tula in South India, where the farmers are directly connected to the production system in one way or another. Uh, there was a big divide between Kadi and handloom sector, which is beginning to be bridged. So the handloom weavers are now coming more into Kadi weaving. NGOs are coming more into, as they move, get the funding from the West, is declining. They're looking at social enterprise and Kadi handloom 
are an important part of that. Designers, we have it. Uh, designers in UK, we, we've been touching designers in uh, India. Increasing number of designers are doing Kadi. They're working directly with spinners and weavers to produce their own Kadi, design their own Kadi. Then there are professionals, uh, the people from the management, people from IT, they're going back. They want to do something for the villages. Sometimes just living the jobs and doing it. Sometimes doing it as a part time. There's an organization uh, active in Madhya Pradesh called Shramdan. These are um, management graduates, IT professionals who left their jobs. They were inspired by Jain Sadhu, and they, they took six months course to learn weaving themselves in Indore, and they're now working in in the sector of both handloom and kali. Uh, Tula, which I talked about is started by Anantu, uh, who is an, is, he's an engineer. He worked in India, then he went to Switzerland, and then they decided to give it all up. Went to Chennai, and they started working with farmers, uh, trying to organize an organic farm chain so the people in Chennai could get organic produce easily. What they found was that some of the organic farmers wanted were interested in growing cotton. They were interested in growing organic cotton, so then to support that they started Tula, uh, which buys cotton from the farmers, gets this process, process through Khadi organizations, and then sells it in the market, makes clothes out of it and sells it in the market. So there's lots of examples of this coming along. The private sector is getting more involved. Uh, Raymond, you know, is, now has his own Khadi brand. Arvind has been involved for a long time. Khadi denim uh, has been used by Levi's and Gap. Uh, so I think Kadi is getting a much broader ownership, much broader uh, uh, visual and people recognizing it. Their new approaches to Kadi is a focus on organic and natural uh, in small pockets, what is growing. There's a focus on indigenous seeds. Uh, there's focus on connecting farming and production of textiles in a very integrated manner. Gram Swamandal again is a very good example of that. In uh, Gujarat, you have Kamir and you have uh, Udyog Bharti, which is working with Jatan Trust, working with God. And a part of Jat, uh, Udyog Bharti's production is now Khadi, working with farmers in the district. The slab is made in the district and the whole process takes place there. So you have a lot of this uh, new energy coming in. And I think what we need to do now is bring the best of local traditions and modern technology to take Kali forward. And I think the next thing is networking and collaborations. It's happened a lot in organic farming and it's now time for that to happen in fabrics. Uh, I think we try to give <coughs> this whole movement a, a conceptual support, uh, turning. So Kadi is about decentralization. It need not be hand you know, it's no longer hand one, one, it's one. I think that's a misnomer. With Amber Charkas, a lot of the hand spending part is gone. And with solar, so we need to recognize that. And we need to give, you know, we call it spindle to solar. So let, let you know, whatever is appropriate in what, which situation, we need to recognize that. But the focus should be on decentralized production, ideally in a cluster of few villages, if not in a larger region. There should be a focus on maximum value addition source and uh, diversity of seeds, production and methods and make it democratic like the artisans and farmers who are involved in the process have the ownership and control. So we call it decentralized, diverse and democratic. Uh, and next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Oh, I think you already want it. Next one now. Yeah, uh, to support this now, <coughs> this uh, what we call the three Ds, this, the systems of decentralized, democratic and diverse systems of production. Uh, we, you know, we, we need, there are different ways that the government and the industry can support that. One, uh, just try to identify a few, is uh, research and documentation. When you talk about zero carbon, well, there's hardly any documentation to show that Kadi is zero carbon or low carbon. Uh, there's very little solid research showing that. 
So we need studies of impact validation. We need studies. There can be a research in the new initiatives which are coming up. Do an inventory of that. Document that. Uh, need to support educational initiatives in this direction. In UK, you know, we're doing it with the fashion and colleges here. Uh, can and think it's happening in India also. But how do we accelerate it? That's the question. It's happening in small ways. How can it be institutionalized? How can it be accelerated? And and I think very important thing is talking about what's going on. If you can assess it, it helps in scaling up. If you, if you know if we have the figures figures, it helps in getting funding for scaling up. Uh, I, so I think I, an assessment of what's impact assessment is very important. It need, it can be both qualitative and quantitative. You also need to look at pilots, which can be scaled up. Look at how scaling thing takes place, and the idea of technology transfer. Uh, technology transfer in the sense that India with Khadi and handlooms as a unique technology, which can be transferred to other countries, especially cotton growing countries in Africa, and in central in uh, Central Asia. Uh, this is something where I think Pickett can take a lead in, uh, and you know, in terms of technology and pilots, you can look at different kinds of models. Some which are, as you can see on the top uh, right-hand corner, is an image from Honduru. Uh, we got it from the Sakari Hat Samiti, and they are working with very basic tools, producing very high-quality kadi, and uh, using indigenous seeds. And then at the other end, you have uh, solar charkas, which can be, which can have a different function. It can, uh, it, 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 it's, not, it's not exactly artisanal, but it can be decentralized, especially if it's in the hands of the communities. And it can, it can co start competing with the market, with the, uh, with the mill, mill, mill sector and the power room sector. <laughs> So you need to have models from very basic to very sophisticated, but the principle should be there should be decentralized, diverse, and democratic. And if you can use technology and industry principles, you can start scaling up. Uh, and I think as I'll show in the next slide, you can scale up considerably. And then you need, I think there's something which the in, uh, industry and commerce can come in provide fellowships, corporate volunteering in the idea, in the area of Kadi. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, you already did that. Uh, so I would suggest to end that should we start thinking about setting a transformative target? They have about four, 400 successful clusters working on Kadi in an innovative way. Uh, it could be the Ponduru model, it could be the solar model, uh, working to set a target of 400 successful clusters by 2025. I'm talking about an all India level. Rajasthan could set its own target. And right now, I might be slightly wrong. The market share for Kadi and Handloom in India is about 5% of the total textile market. Can we change it to 25% by 2025? I think instead of just talking in abstract, we should, we should start planning and see how it can make a really significant change. If we, if, we, if we look at this kind of targets, start planning, see how it can be done. Uh, we can do it. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, so before ending, I'll just uh, bring in Gandhiji and one of his famous quotes that I like is, uh, in a small way, we can change the world. So I think let's do it in a small way. Start in a small way, think big, Start planning big and change the world. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for that uh, comprehensive overview and vision for the <clears throat> development of Khadi and handloom sector. And in fact, the 3D concept and the concept of thinking big and starting taking big step towards achieving that. We will uh, look forward to work in that direction. Our next speaker is Ms. Lela Tayyabji, who is chairperson of uh, Dastkar. And she is a craft designer, writer, and uh, the craft NGO Dastka that she formed. She helped. Uh, she has been working with grassroots artisans all over India for four decades, and many of her most rewarding projects involve creating new livelihood avenues through craft and uh, 
uh, pastoral and marginalized rural communities, bonded labor in Bihar, displaced villages in Ranthambhor, tribals in Odisha, victims of insurgency in Kashmir. And Ms. Lela Tayyabji studied arts in Baroda in Japan, and she worked as a freelance designer in textiles, graphics, interiors, the theater. And she was awarded the Padam Shri Award in 2012. Over to you, ma'am. Honored to have you with us. Please. Thank you. So handlooms and khadi are the warp and weft of the Indian subcontinent. Our culture, our aesthetics, our economy are rooted in its threads. And handloom weavers form the major part of our handicraft sector, which in turn is the second largest sector of our economy. Kabir, the beloved 15th century mystic weaver poet, said, God Almighty is also a weaver. The spinning of yarn and weaving of handloom cloth is a metaphor used over the ages for creation, for the interplay of gender, culture, community, skills that make up our universe. The message in these verses is that the mingling of multiplicity and diversity leads to unity and strength. And that when different strands come together, they create a fabric that is not only beautiful, but resilient and durable. This is a vital metaphor for the world today in these increasingly divisive times. Khadi and village industries are part of India's culture and aesthetic. They are also an integral part of its economic and employment structure, employing approximately 46 lakh people and generating over three and a half thousand crores a year. For some Indians, Khadi is a philosophy. For many others, it's a fabric that lacks functionality and consumer appeal and is also highly priced and expensive to maintain. This is mainly due to bad management. Globalization and liberalization have changed the face of the Indian market and the psyche of the Indian consumer. We cannot remain oblivious of this. If Khadi and Kraft are to survive, they cannot remain static, locked in outdated mindsets, obsolete production systems, and outmoded marketing strategies. Specialists in this classic Indian textile tradition, like Martin Singh, Tara Gandhi, Rakesh Thakur, Rita Kapoor, Ritu Kumar, Srila Devi, Rajesh Pratap Singh, Jagada Rajapa, Niru Kumar, have all done extraordinary work in Khadi. Malka and Kamir have revived indigenous cotton types and made wonderful fabrics and garments with contemporary appeal. Their success in the market shows Khadi can sell if it is removed from the clutches of KVIC. KVIC, however, is fighting over the right of using the word Khadi and uh, instead of trying to modernize and market itself. Instead of being delighted that more and more people are becoming aware of the potential and benefits of Khadi, they are squabbling over the right to call it Khadi. Many of those officially mandated to the preservation of Khadi see any change in traditional production and marketing systems as a threat to intrinsic Gandhian values. Even raising prices is considered taboo, so Khadi mainly survives on subsidies. They forget that Gandhiji was not only a philosopher saint, but a supreme realist. As long ago as 1920, he observed that all khadi is not equally good quality. It easily crumples and coat and trousers do not remain stiff. It shrinks so much. Gandhi was someone who understood and used the media and mass psychology with style and savvy. He advocated the promotion of khadi by a variety of methods, improving and diversifying its quality, design and usage, propagating its cool, user-friendly comfort, stressing the benefits to the domestic economy of buying and wearing indigenously produced fabric, and making wearing khadi a symbol of national pride. Gandhi's message is as relevant today as three quarters of a century ago. Market for khadi 
is made up of three distinct segments. The traditional Khadi buyer, who wears Khadi often as a political or social message. The aesthetically aware Indian who wears handlooms and traditional Indian dress as an ethnic fashion statement. And the new international buyer who has recently become aware of Khadi as an eco-friendly, politically correct fabric with a story that can become its own advertising pitch, i.e. spun by third world women producers and associated with Gandhi and the freedom movement. All three consumer segments have huge potential for growth. However, the inability of most Khadi production to meet delivery deadlines achieve product standardization and follow current trends is a major deterrent to all segments of the market. Its failure to attract new customers and increase its market share is also due to poor marketing and promotion. Despite its many unique characteristics, Khadi sales have failed to keep up with production cap capability and its potential for employment generation. As Gandhi said a hundred years ago, most khadi produced today is unsuitable for stitched and Western wear garments. It does not fall and drape well, it crumples in bags, and those qualities of khadi that do meet the requirement of the ready to wear industry are not available in bulk. So any recommendations for new khadi strategy must therefore begin with the basics. It means starting from the cotton itself, not with hosting fashion shows of Khadi, because doing that should be the end of the process, not the beginning. So we need to reintroduce varieties of indigenous cotton and upgrade the spinning and weaving technology. We need to make improvements in fabric construction and diversification and innovation in counts, qualities, and ranges. We need to document Khadi techniques and traditional skills, the varieties and designs, as well as modern innovative developments. We need to have a database and sample and swatch bank of all the Khadi varieties nationwide, since every part of India, every region has its own distinctive cotton, its own distinctive weaves and its own distinctive qualities. And we need to have the numbers and production capacities of these various producers. There needs to be standardization in production systems, in storage and delivery mechanisms. And we definitely need to upgrade the product range by improving the quality, color, count, specifications of Khadi that are available in the market. So, Given the two different types of people who buy Khadi, uh, we have the ones who want the classic traditional regional saris, and we need to market those as a classic Khadi collections. But we also need to develop simple, stylish, contemporary ranges of men and women's ready to wear. And we need to drastically improve the stitching, sizing, and tailoring of Khadi products currently available in the KVICs. Development of product ranges and styles must be for both the upper end of the urban consumer market and the rural market who still would buy Khadi if it was available readily and at appropriate prices. Once we've got all that going, then comes the marketing and promotion, packaging and presentation. There's no point again, putting the cart before the horse and developing a marketing uh, and media package when you don't have your product and you don't have your production systems ready to go. But having done that, we then need to have an advertising and media campaign nationwide, appealing particularly to millennials who are really unaware of the qualities of Khadi. We need to train and motivate the sales staff in KVIC outlets and sensitize them to contemporary marketing techniques as well as the significance of the fabric that they sell. They should be given exposure to retailing methods, display and promotion techniques, and salesmanship. 
I think all of us have had that experience of going to a Khadi Bandar and a very lethargic, disinterested salesperson, sort of uh, when you point to something up there and say, can I see that? And say, they say, oh, that is the thing that you can see, but the color is different. So we do need to train people in marketing. We also need, I think, to take Khadi out of the Khadi Bhandars. It doesn't always have to be sold exclusively to KVIC. Uh, Khadi should be showcased and available in all kinds of different forums. Yes, the fashion shows and international trade fairs because that gets you eyeballs, but it also should be in Khadi mail, mail, mailers, in TV serials, in mail order catalogs and exclusive boutiques. Developing a domestic and international network of wholesale bulk buyers is very, very important. At least 50% of annual turnover should be produced against actual orders because otherwise you end up with these um, storerooms just piled high with Khadi and with rats running all over it and then which you try to sell by reducing the prices down. The world is suddenly talking natural materials, green, e-commerce, friendly, slow fashion, handmade, handloom, handspun, have become literally fashion labels. This is the moment for Khadi. Let's not fight over who can use it by its name. Khadi is Indian, it belongs to all of us. In the 17th century, India clothed the world. Let's do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, and <clears throat> for that uh, passionate uh, and um, touching story about the development of handroom and khadi in India. In fact, if you recall, I was mentioning before the program also, we had this uh, intervention wherein we got artisans from Ruda display their products at Aga Khan Hall in Delhi and provide some mode of uh, market access. Now we are caught in a pandemic so for the transient period of time if we can do an online linkage of uh, you are also doing a lot of things and we can also work it over. We have recently done a big textile fair by the name Vastra but then this is something that could be done for the handloom weavers and artisans specifically. So let's see how we proceed on this. Our next speaker is Mr. Dheera Chirivastava, who is Commissioner of Rastan Foundation. Rastan Foundation is an institution that connects emotionally, socially, culturally, economically with the Rastani diaspora. And it's almost 19 years ever since it has been formed. And Mr. Chirivastava has a rich experience of working with the government of Rastan and at national level also. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Very good afternoon, everybody, and a respected chief guest, uh, Arun Mayaram Saab, who is vice chairman of uh, Chief Minister's Economic Advisory Council and also advisor to CM. A very warm welcome to all the dignitaries, industry members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be part of today's webinar on future of handloom and khadi that aims to revive, restore, and infuse fresh energy into the handloom sector and take it to newer heights. I would like to compliment Fikki for this particular initiative and also providing me with an opportunity to share my thoughts. We are all celebrating 150 years of Mahatma Gandhi and organizing this on the eve of Gandhi Jayanti, which makes it even more special. Khadi for Gandhiji was symbolic of Indian self-respect and self-reliance. Khadi has also been a symbol of our freedom struggle and is relevant even today in terms of empowering villages and communities, especially women and tribals. Our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Ashok Gelot himself is deeply committed to the Gandhian philosophy and this subject is very, very close to his heart. He's a true Gandhian. There is a, also a heightened interest and demand for handloom products like never before. And time is right that we strengthen the entire value chain, especially designing and marketing to unleash the real value and potential of this sector. Khadi is organic and zero carbon footprint nature allows us to believe that a lot can be done combining the different natural fibers of our country 
and by keeping the original essence of khadi and still making it fit for the modern society the pandemic covid-19 have really affected this sector badly we must leverage technology to connect the artisans with national and international buyers post covid era innovative marketing strategies will be the need of the hour e-commerce giants like amazon and azure are already beginning to sell handlooms collaboration may be explored with individual donors and corporate to help weavers sit sustain for the next few months and to rebuild the value chain to prevent weavers from mitigating to other professions the market may respond differently in the post covid 19 scenario we need to find ways to help weavers directly sell their products while craft organizations are trying to help government bodies are also finding ways to address the concerns of the handloom and craft sectors various ngos have initiated crowd source contingency funds aiming to raise some money to help its weaver clusters aggressive online campaigns like support khadi or wear khadi by celebrities or promote on social platforms to make it more visible on a brighter side the lockdown has made people appreciate things that are local in a bid to rekindle the love for handlooms go cop launched the kind uh, kindness in kind campaign a few days ago inviting customers to post photographs of their favorite artisanal products though the pace of technological development in rural cottage and village industries including khadi sector in india has been extremely slow kvic can play an important role in constant promotion of khadi especially among youth and i i cannot agree more than uh, lala tayab ji what just mentioned that uh, the showroom condition and the uh, techniques to train the showroom guys really is need of the art initiatives may be taken through research and development to modify the techniques for improving raw material invent newer blends which will overcome the problem of maintenance and cost as it will encourage the consumer to buy and wear khadi substantial efforts need to be taken in order to reduce the cost and make it more consumer friendly for its awareness and promotion as far as young generation is concerned they are aware about khadi fabric but not ready to accept it as major part of their wardrobe this is mainly due to limitations like less availability of colors prints textures etc landing khadi in a sustainable way is what we need to look at hence transform from the original origin of dyeing khadi with vegetable dyes by adding natural medicinal herbs like neem tulsi mint cardamom thyme kola kolsa etc this will allow khadi to be a smart fabric with medicinal values also khadi is emerging as a fashion fabric leading national and international designers indulges with khadi is forcing fashion world to take serious note of it in india as well as abroad the study on this shows a lot of scope for research which can be carried out maybe by researchers as well as by designers to make khadi more popular which would help building this cottage industry well in our country as mentioned rajasthan foundation is making its efforts through various programs at national and international level to give our prominent rajasthani diaspora a platform to connect with their motherland through our whatsapp groups we are connecting with nrrs globally organizing vcs with certain senior government officials for them as per their interest areas we have organized vc of international nrrs with honorable chief minister also we will be more than happy and willing to extend whatever cooperation we can ex- we can through our national and international network in this handloom movement we will definitely keep handloom and khadi sector as our prime agenda while interacting with like minded nrrs i must mention here that uh, as of now also we still have certain queries from leading nrr in uae uh, if, and to know if rajasthan can provide disposable patta donas to replace uh, plastics there is a huge demand and if we can uh, come up with a plan and i'll be very happy to extend my help and cooperation in this sector i once again 
thank Vicky for organizing this crucial webinar and wish all the success to the Handlo movement. Thank you once again. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sustainability and inclusion, these are the some underlying themes of all the addresses and presentations that we have seen till now. And the design intervention has also come as a major input. So we have the two institutes present here. Many more who would be listening. Uh, a key role to play in the resurrection of Khadi and Handloom in Rajasthan and country as a whole. Now we have with us our chief guest, Dr. Arvind Mayaram, who is economic advisor to Honorable Chief Minister of Rajasthan and vice chairman of Rajasthan Economic Transformation Advisory Council. Uh, many of you would be uh, knowing that he has held very important positions like finance secretary, government of India, special secretary in the Ministry of Rural Development. He was alternate governor to India on the board of uh, World Bank, ADB, African Development Bank. He was India's finance deputy in G20 and BRICS. He was on the boards of Reserve Bank of India and SEBI. And he was India's chief negotiator for BRICS New Development Bank and Asian Infrastructure Development Bank and co-chairman of the framework working group of G20. He has spearheaded the establishment of framework for mainstreaming public-private partnership in India and designed the first PPP module for delivering infrastructure in rural areas. In fact, he is considered to be an authority on public-private partnership. And uh, he was vice president uh, of the World Association of Investment Promotion Agency, uh, formed under the ages of uh, UNCTAD, UNIDO, FIAS, and MEGA for two terms in early 2000. He has been an investment promotion expert with Uktar for several years and his experience in the area of PPP is internationally acknowledged. And in Rajasthan also, he has held positions of industry secretary, planning secretary and commissioner investments. So with such a rich and wide experience, we would be delighted to listen to your views. Over to you, sir. Uh, Sir, you are on mute. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I must acknowledge that uh, whatever experience that you have reeled out uh, that I have gained over years doesn't make me eligible to be uh, speaking with some authority on the subject today. Uh, I think we already have had some authoritative uh, uh, discourse on this with uh, very eminent people, including uh, Ms. Tayabji, who's a renowned uh, expert in the field. So I don't think I would be able to add very much to what already has been said. But I would like to bring a different perspective to what we have discussed today. And uh, let me try and say this. There are two you know, the, the problem is, in, in, and this is true for most things that we do in India, we uh, get caught into a large number of contradictory objectives or principles that drive us to achieve something. In the case of Khadi, we get very emotional. It is Gandhiji's gift to us, and this has uh, been there for us. This is part of the freedom movement and so on. And then we are also looking at the commercial world as it has developed over the last uh, 70, 100 years. We are a globalized nation. We want to be right in the front of, uh, of uh, developed countries. We want everyone in this country to get good jobs or good livelihoods and good earnings. Uh, so there is this, this whole issue of romanticizing the past and then not being able to deal with the present. So I think uh, what Ms. Tayabji said, I am very much in consonance with that. We need to begin to look at it as a hard core economic activity. And the principle before us today is that if 88% or 90% 80 of India's population is engaged in the informal sector, then both handloom and khadi are very large uh, components of this informal sector which employs people. So look at it this way, if you were to, and that's why I have a bit of a, in, uh, a, a conceptual problem when we move towards solarization, as Mr. Shah mentioned, of looms, 
because the moment you move towards that you're moving towards organized production of khadi and then you are shrinking the space for employment for a very large number of people in the rural areas because those that kind of solarized production cannot happen in the kind of decentralized world that we live in in india today so we need to be mindful of our definitions i think we should not blur our definitions so number 1 we are looking at khadi and handloom as mainstay of our rural occupation or employment which is non farm in nature till such time that we can organize or urbanize our population to the extent that they are not dependent on this on on occupations in the rural areas which is going to take quite a while number 2 we are looking at competition with a of a highly commercialized world i i would say consumerism drives and that's where i would differ with uh, uh, ms tulika gupta consumerism is driving what we call growth what we call gdp what we call uh, and today what has happened because consumption has collapsed the indian economy has gone into contraction close to 24 or 25% this is collapse of consumption and what is consumption it is consumerism we are we cannot hide from these realities in in a very romantic world of saying that we should uh, you know need and not greed etc greed drives consumerism i want people to be greedy for khadi and that is the only way that khadi will be purchased by people and more people will start buying it so how do we make people greedy for khadi or hand and there again i think a lot of things have been said but i do believe that we need to as ms tayeb ji has said and i'm sorry uh, ms tayeb ji i am drawing a lot upon what you have said but i think it makes almost eminent sense one problem that we see is the kvic uh, way back when i was in finance ministry we tried very hard and we pushed for a loan of close to 500 crores for the khadi sector by saying that we need certain reforms for instance cost charts in khadi cost charts in khadi kill the weaver they actually put a ceiling on how much a weaver can earn now cost charts were put in place 70 years ago 60 years ago because at that point of time cost chart was giving you a minimum wage so you said not below this so you have you have costed the labor cost the the material cost etc and said this is what you should get today the act has become a ceiling for the labor so you go to i mean in jaipur for instance we have had uh, khadi exhibitions you go and see the shawls the beautiful shawls that are produced for women uh, by khadi in in uh, in bikaner we have a lot of these khadi producers in bikaner who produce urmul has done a lot of work on that also they produce and you get a shawl for 500 rupees 450 rupees and you go to a delhi showroom anywhere bulk of these are pur- purchased at 400 rupees from these khadi uh, you know kind of exhibitions or khadi bhandars etc and they are sold for 2000 rupees 2500 rupees now out of this 500 rupees the weaver is getting maybe 100 150 rupees because of the cost chart so we need to move or we need actually i mean on the contrary of what we believe we need to move towards the market linkage we need to move towards and therefore what we had suggested in that particular reform which kvic actually stymied and didn't allow to happen was there has to be some sort of a revenue share model for the artisan and therefore if you are selling something at 2000 you are you free the cost or free the sale price let the price be determined by the market but whatever you are doing you minimum wage you have given to him whatever minimum wages and then whatever is the profit that anybody else is making let there be a share in that pro- profit to the artisans who have made it we need to move towards market linkages and market realization of value uh, and this is something we need to work very hard towards marketing again i am completely against the idea that marketing should be limited to only khadi ghars and by the way khadi is not just an indian idea i mean it is a subcontinental idea because i went to pakistan and i saw huge 
showrooms which say khadi products in pakistan they produce khadi and they sell khadi and they promote khadi for the simple reason that they are also in the rural areas if there is no other uh, occupation they can provide khadi becomes the kind of non farm additional income to those who are on uh, doing farming and have not earning enough so i think we need to move out of khadi bhandars i would be very happy if the entire value chain is created so i think khadi should also be sold in lajpat nagar and sarojini nagar at a price which is affordable to that that category of people who go and buy there and it should also be available in ritu kumar showroom at a price where which is affordable by somebody else after all when we go and buy clothes we don't buy clothes only in boutique shops so why is it that we push only you know ritu kumars and others to come and start doing this how much can they do how can you scale that up when uh, when mr shah says 25% of the market should be with khadi how do you get there if you are only going to be limited to these uh, high fashion uh, showrooms so you need an entire value chain uh, where khadi can or handlooms can be sold right from lajpat nagar right up to the best boutiques in the world and so we need to produce at at every level and i think uh institutions like iicd which i'm so happy because i was associated with its formation and its institution uh, uh iicd or uh, pearl academy or other similar kind of institutions must begin to look at providing inputs which can design for each mark segment in the market the buyer segment in the market not just for the high end fashion designers so uh, so this is something else that we need to look at and design therefore becomes important freeing the the market uh, with certain security nets in terms of the pricing is uh, is another one i think a lot of work has been done i i acknowledge that uh, in terms of designing re redesigning hand tools for the uh, those who are uh, weaving uh, you know hand looms or khadi but much more needs to be done to increase their productivity because one very critical thing we must remember is in bihar um, leila tayeb ji has worked there or in uh, in rajasthan or anywhere else very large number of people who were in the handloom handicraft sector actually go and look for jobs in under mg narega because they can earn more there than they can earn producing the handicrafts do we really and in any of these institutions like iic do we really do the economics of hand uh, handloom or khadi what the economics means that if we are looking at a person i mean his sustenance level for a person's earning is going to be 2 to 300 rupees a day can the person in khadi or handloom sector weaver in khadi or say handloom sector earn that much of money 300 if not you will have these artisans in flocks moving away to other places construction industry in bombay construction industry in delhi uh, into mg narega into anything else but they will not be in the in the khadi or weaving weaving sector so we need to look at the economics of it and see how do we improve productivity and how do we improve price realization for their products so they continue to uh, provide us with the joy of their skill which which has been passed on through years and how do we get younger people to get into that uh, that particular field after all master craftsmen i have seen so many people weavers i have been seen for instance uh, i was in minorities ministry also for a while i went to banaras and i went to other places to see how the the people were you know into the younger people don't get into it the older people who have who are there are continuing to produce it but you will see very soon they will lose it because they don't want to go there because there is not enough earning and there is no enough, not enough dignity in it uh, so i think we need to answer the structural issues more comprehensively uh, i think we need to do a little more hard thinking in it uh, move away from romanticizing this uh, this sector uh, become more pragmatic and practical and i think at the bottom line at the at the you know is going to be how economics plays out in terms of 
what the the artisan or the weaver can realize from what it produces uh, that at the end is going to be uh, what determines whether these will survive or they will be overtaken by uh, more machine made and other kind of items thank you very much for inviting me to be with you thank you sir thank you in fact for bringing uh, a right to perspective to the entire discussion in fact uh, what you said ultimately it's the market dynamics that will decide the revival and survival uh, the stimulus can be a transient factor in this and uh, moving forward uh, we have some questions also we will take the closing comments from all the panelists before we invite uh, vanna parnami ji for the concluding remarks and i will try and read those questions in uh, Uh, my request itself. So first, I would request Mr. Randeep Vikram saying there is a question that how tourism uh, industry looks at the intangible heritage things like uh, local art. Uh, it, it, it talks about performing arts as well as the arts and crafts like handicrafts and handloom industry also. Yes, it's very important uh, that the performing. arts the art and culture are part and parcel of uh, tourism industry because most of our uh, hotels which are in rural areas depend lot on the local crafts and arts so it's a, it's a they are intermingling with each other so and they are very very important for us thank you now the next question is for uh, ms alka madan if she can throw some insight on this that uh, how people will decide on the legitimacy of a particular product whether it's a original handloom or a silk sari or a khadi product is there any certification mechanism already in place any idea i any believe so, uh, in, in most of the places uh, there are certificates uh, especially with the handloom places but not everywhere if you especially look at the e-commerce sites and and if you buy products for there they may be saying handloom and all but there are no certifications there but if you go to authentic shops you go to these handloom so there are uh, certificates which actually says also the label says it how much it contains uh, which product we need uh, authentic certification but, for buyers at all platforms I, i believe we, we we should look at that site right and who uh, says that these labels are authentic or not that is also a bigger question thank you thank you next i would request to lika ji for her closing comments and there is a related question also that talks about the affordability of the handloom products that they are heavily priced in comparison to their uh, machine made peers so how do that question get answered otherwise it will remain in a niche segment you are on mute ma'am tulika ji you have to unmute yourself okay it wasn't allowing me to unmute i think this okay. uh, my um, sort of connection okay. and i came in again so it was okay. so yeah uh see the thing is uh it is very complicated uh as uh, sir rightly said uh, 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 dr ayram sir said that uh, you know uh, we need to drive consumers but if but if we do that uh, it is it is really multi layered uh, a lot of us uh, who uh, actually deal with it on a daily basis uh, feel that at least i feel that that uh, Uh, certain handloom products are highly priced because it has to be sustainable for the weaver also if a weaver takes 10 days to weave a sari then you have to give him something per day which is a decent amount and thus the cost of hand woven products uh, goes high because uh, there is silk or cotton or whatever there is a uh, initial uh, cost of the yarns and then it is his daily uh, work that he is doing so obviously uh, there are products which will cost high then if you compare them to machine made products uh, and machine made products uh, are cheaper because a lot of them are, can be produced in a single day and uh, uh, that is why the cost of the machine made products will be cheaper uh, 
when we say we want to promote handlooms and that is why i showed those figures also for for the last 200 years we've been suffering and uh, it is commendable that we've still been we are still trying for the last 100 years to to revive this industry because uh, you get uh, uh, you know the people who were supporting it earlier there were two kinds of uh, people one who were weaving and wearing their own clothes and others who were weaving for the patrons so because they were patrons they could afford whatever today they are consumers everybody wants kam kharch mein zyada aaye agar dusre country se hum saste mein khareed sakenge to hum kyun apne country ka khareedenge not everybody thinks like this it's my country i should buy so there it is multi layered and that is why the costs because we want our weaver also to earn properly uh, we don't want others to get cheaper products at the cost of the weaver uh, so so it is it, there is no simple answer to it costs should come low government keeps trying to give subsidies because of that reason so that it's low and people can buy but then because subsidies are given very good quality products are not created because they know they can uh, you know uh, do away with whatever and uh, only people who come in themselves like dastakar or other designers they work hard they pay the uh, weavers also well and uh, they create good quality products that is why then sometimes prices are high or low depending on the input that goes in so uh, uh, i mean there is no one single answer but the answer is that because most of the people are consumers they want cheap products they want good products that is why uh, they are not ready to patronize the crafts the way uh, you know uh, the earlier uh, generation used to do or the niche a clientele does today uh, and when we look into the economics it is uh, it is very very complicated you can't provide everything to everybody at a, a low cost until and unless it's machine made again it comes back to that and uh, so so there is this uh, uh, dichotomy uh, but i sincerely feel that yes we we should promote handcrafts it is our country we should promote it we should do the best that we can uh, but competition is difficult there are two different layers in Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can add something here, it is like you know organic farming versus the other farming. Organic products, you know, which we use uh, fruits or vegetables are expensive versus the other. Yeah, it so is the choice. It's it's a choice the consumer makes that what is yeah. good for me, you know. Yeah. So exactly, consume less but consume good quality. If all of us do that, then we can do khadi. Then we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are running out of time quickly. One for Mr. Kishor Shah. Okay, what are the technological intervention possible in increasing uh, uh, the production of khadi? And if it has, it will remain handmade, hand woven. Then how to how we will achieve the scalability part in it? So, Mr. Shah, you would like to say something on this? Uh. I mean, I think for me, definition of khadi is not necessarily handmade. A lot of it is already not handmade. Uh, and if you look at uh, amber charka, it's not really handmade. And the, and the health issues concerned with amber charka, which is you know sometimes sixteen spindles, have been highlighted. It's not really very healthy. There there are health and safety issues there. I think I would remove the idea of handmade from there. The idea of decentralized production, I think, is important. with as many components of handmade that as much power in the with the uh, people as possible uh, what was the question exactly the question was ke, uh, how do we achieve scalability if we focus on handmade but then you said ke technology uh, handmade can yeah. be a segment but then technology intervention is necessary yeah i mean i think examples of malka and uh, kamir which leila ji also uh, referred to there are very good examples of you know combining handmade with machine and if you look at uh, slaver production it's done in six six slaver units in india it's not handmade it's, it's for, you know, less an important part of thank you uh, um, this one is for ms lela tayyab ji can there be a weaver skilled with high quality curated products for hand woven and handmade through which products are available for people around the world it's talking about weavers idea of weavers skilled what is your take on it ma'am I think that one of the things that we are very fortunate about in India is that we have markets at multiple levels. So we have consumers also of a very varied number, and then we have producers of handlooms and khadi who also have multiple skills and are at different levels. And we need to match these. We need not get too focused either on high end or low end. 
or you know sarkari bandar end i just want to say as a sort of conclusion to this is that khadi is certainly part of india's historic past but it is the responsibility of all of us to see that khadi and handlooms remains a part of our present and our future it has huge potential and we should make the most of it and government needs to be a catalyst in this process and not become a vendor thank you thank you uh, there is no specific question but any closing comments mr niraj shrivastav ji nay no, thank you very much uh, i will only be uh, happy to uh, as uh, lala ji has just mentioned to play the role of a catalyst thank you sir we will be working with you closely for this sure thank you look forward to your support you catalyst we want you as an activist <laughs> sure uh, uh, mayram sir any closing comments or should i invite uh, vandana ji for concluding the session absolutely absolutely Okay. Now I would request Ms. Vanna Pranami, who is chairperson of uh, Flow Fikki Ladies Organisation Jaipur chapter, and uh, she is an entrepreneur and she has uh, transformed and created White Peacock, uh, and uh, which is now one of the leading manufacturer and exporter of marble sculptures and artefacts. Uh, over to you, Vanna Ji, for the concluding remarks. Namaskar. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the distinguished speakers and delegates. It was really an enriching experience to be a part of such a wonderful panel of speakers. Uh, the deliberations generated a lot of confidence that our crafts would not only survive but flourish in times to come. There is an increased sensitivity towards environment today, due to which sustainable fabrics are in demand. and the importance of sustainability would play a crucial role in the resurrection of handloom and khadi hand woven khadi has caught worldwide attention and appreciation because it is durable climate friendly zero carbon biodegradable water conserving long lasting and organic in nature and khadi is also symbol of women empowerment as most of the weavers are women it is important to bring it to notice that uh, that it it uh, to bring khadi to mainstream which will help weavers especially women to continue what they do best as well as to create more jobs we at fikki flow have also taken several initiatives in this regard right from creating an online platform for the artisans of the country which will enable them to exhibit their art to the world and simultaneously providing them an opportunity to adapt themselves in these different times Flow Creative Dignity was inaugurated by Shrimati Vasundhara Rajay, which aims to support and promote artisans. Flow Jaipur chapter members celebrated six national handloom weavers, and by posting pictures on social media, by wearing handloom sarees and products, sending messages across the society to promote and embrace the Indian handloom weaves to help towards creating Atmanirbhar Bharat. In the end, I would like also like to appreciate the efforts taken by Pearl Academy and Ms. Alka Madhan for this endeavor. Thank you, and have a nice day. Namaskar. Thank you. With this, we come to close of the program. Thank you, Mayram sir. Thank you, Deepak ji. Thank you, all the speakers, sir. We will be look forward to your continued support and guidance.